Justin and I had a beautiful gay Jewish wedding here in Oakland. And we live in a beautiful gay Jewish house right here. Actually, a little apartment. I want to talk to you today, not just about today, but I want to talk to you about every day. Every day, the torture got worse. The Israelites had ventured into the unknown and arrived at a place called Egypt. In Hebrew, it's called Mitzrayim, the narrow place. Early indications that life would be good soon gave way to enslavement and torment every day for generations. Fanatical fear led Pharaoh to one final paroxysm of murderous sadism. The first born boy of every Israelite family, a young child of promise, of potential, of possibility, would be sacrificed to the psychotic hate machine every day, another child. For the Israelites, this decree was the last straw. It was time they decided to speak out. And in a bar in Orlando, in a modest corner of a mid-sized city, the slaughter of 50 young, beautiful people. As queer people have always been murdered in this country. Every day. Yeah. Juan Ramon Guerrero, 22, had told his cousin Robert that he was gay about two years ago. Worried about his family's reaction living in a homophobic nation, he didn't tell them until just before the beginning of this year. They were very accepting, Robert said. As long as he was happy, they were okay with it. His family was okay. Juan was okay. Until today. Another young man lost. Just like every day. And still the names come. A roll call of misery. Edward. Luis. Peter, Eric, each name, a young man, a child, full like an autumn fig with the sweet promise of a bright future, a young life destroyed, another name, this day, like every day. In the end, it was the sacrifice of young people that was the last straw for the Israelites. They spoke up, they spoke out, they cried out, Vayishma Elohim, and God heard their cry. And for LGBT people, for our friends and our families, can this finally be the last straw? Can these young martyrs be our last? Can this finally be the time that the world hears our cries? It's clear already, tragically, that some Americans are hard of hearing when it comes to queer suffering. For some people, this was an attack on America. For some people, this was part of a war on our freedom. And so our queerness, the very reason which our beautiful young souls were targeted, becomes irrelevant, becomes ignored. But to their killer, it was most certainly not irrelevant. His target was not a nightclub. His target was not our freedom. His target was not America. His target was actual queer people who are now dead, killed for being queer. Like queer people are always killed in America, every day. That's right. That's right. America, in fact, has been a place that tolerated and abetted and sanctioned attacks on queer people. Yes. Gay bars like Pulse exist as safe havens to protect queer people from America. <laughs> oh, but when that rhetoric results in the murder of queer folks, when the murderer happens to be a Muslim, suddenly queers are part of America. <laughs> And what about when no Muslim is there to be scapegoated? Are queers part of America then? Yeah! Yes! Are queers part of America when a frat boy can beat up a trans woman? When gay men are afraid to walk the street hand in hand? When it's legal to get fired for being a lesbian? In America, every day? We may wish America to be a place of equal justice, a place that lives up to our most cherished values, our most noble aspirations, but queer people don't live in fantasy America. Queer people live in real America of gay bashing and second class citizenship, and queer people of color live in an America of homophobia and murderous racism. The book of Leviticus demands, Lo ta'amod al dam reyacha, don't you stand around while your neighbor's blood is being shed. Make no mistake about it. 
hateful words that you hear from people on the television and near your street corner and maybe next door. They create an atmosphere in which blood is shed, not just in Orlando, not just today, every day. And so in our grief today, we honor the adults who don't stand around when a queer child is bullied. We honor the teachers who refuse to tolerate hateful harassment. We honor the queer people who come out in a society that has wished us dead and sometimes more than wished. We honor the politicians who vote to save queer lives even if it means losing votes. We honor the courage of queer kids and queer adults who refuse to hide, who come together, who laugh and love and dance and dream and dare, yes, dare to be themselves, to be their glorious, gorgeous queer selves every day. Juan Ramon Guerrero is gone. And so is Edward, and so is Luis, and so is Peter, and so is Eric, and too many names, and there are more names coming, and I am tired of listing names. Yeah! Their blood cries out to us from the ground. Remember us. Refuse to look away. Make sure there is no next time. Make sure our voices rattle the gates of power, rattle the very gates of heaven. Topple those pharaohs. Protect the beautiful children. Reach out to one another. Build a world. Build a world of compassion. Build a world of love. Build a world of justice. Build it together. Speak up. Speak out. Keep speaking out this day and every day. Yeah.